football, or soccer, is one of the most popular sports in the world. It's played by millions of young people around the world every day. At the professional level, it's an international game. Talented young players often leave their home countries to train at the youth academies of famous football clubs around the world. Becoming a successful player can change their life. One of the world's best footballers, Leo Messi, is Argentinian, but he has been playing for FC Barcelona in Spain for many years. Messi moved to Spain when he was just 13, and he was only 16 when he started playing for the first team. For a few lucky players, like Messi, playing football has not only been a lifelong passion, but it has also made them rich and famous. And sometimes, this fame gives them a chance to help others. Messi now works as a goodwill ambassador for UNICEF, helping children around the world. But even if it doesn't make you a star, football can make a dramatic difference to people's lives. Once a year, over 60 teams from around the world meet to play in a very unusual football tournament, the Homeless World Cup. The Homeless World Cup brings together teams of homeless people to play football for their country and helps them change their lives forever. Mel Young is the co-founder and president of the Homeless World Cup. Mel started his career in journalism, but since 1993, he has been working on projects helping the homeless. Today, he works at the Global Organisation's offices at a football stadium in Scotland. He explains how the tournament started. The idea of the Homeless World Cup came uh, in a conference uh, uh, that we were having in, in 2001 in Cape Town. I was talking with a colleague of mine, Harold Schmidt from, from Austria, about how, how we could include more homeless people. Mel and Harold thought of things that brought people together across the world. We use football because it's very, very simple. Everybody understands it. It's an international language, first of all. So you, you, you can involve anybody, male, female, big, small, really good player, really useless player, doesn't matter. It's a great way of including people. Teams in the Homeless World Cup don't play matches in a football stadium. They play a kind of football called street soccer. Um, street soccer is, is just a simple form of uh, uh, football uh, which is usually played in, in the street. Um, I mean, football is just this wonderful game you can play anywhere. You, you can play it on an 11-a-side standard football pitch, but you can also play 2-a-side or 20-a-side, or, or you can play it indoors or outdoors, or, and you can mix teams of really good people and not very good people. So street soccer is like that. It's just a space in the street. <laughs> The teams play on a small court. There are eight players in each team, but only four play at the same time. The games only last for 14 minutes. In the World Cup tournament, the teams play about three games a day. Oh, 
Organizing an international football tournament with teams of homeless people isn't simple. It takes a lot of work, and it's a challenge for Mel's team in Scotland and their partners working around the world. As well as organizing the tournament, they have to raise money and get passports and tickets for all the players. So it, it's all year round work that we're doing to, to make sure that they, they come to, to, to the event. But the hard work is worth it. The tournament has grown every year, and now there are around 50,000 homeless people from 70 countries training for a place in their national team. The organization has many famous supporters, and you can even watch the matches on television. For Mel and his team, the most important thing about the Homeless World Cup is that over 70% of the homeless players change their lives for the better because of the tournament. The coach of the Kenyan team agrees. I can tell you that 95% of uh, all the players who took part has changed their life for better. Because of Homeless World Cup, that they are where they are now. They say, no, this is not my life. I was not meant to be on the street. I must get out of it, go back home, and start a new life. Mel believes that the project is so successful because it helps the homeless become part of a team. This helps them to improve their own lives while the project supports and encourages them. I, I mean, I think my, my view is that, that, that homelessness is, uh, it's, you're on your own. And football is this great way in which you can, can be included. So we get people from that position and say, do you want to play football? And then the training sessions build. So you create a kind of, if you like, a family, which is the team. And the results for people like David Duke can be amazing. I was living in a homeless project in Glasgow and I took part in the Homeless World Cup, which was held in Gothenburg in 2004. David had become homeless as a teenager in Glasgow in Scotland. But the Homeless World Cup helped him change his life. I went back into further education once I came back from the Homeless World Cup. David completed his college course and got a full-time job. And he continued to work with the Homeless World Cup. My participation in the Homeless World Cup has led to me being a player, an assistant coach, a coach, manager, project manager, and I'm now a global ambassador for Homeless World Cup. Today, David runs Street Soccer, an organisation helping other homeless people in Scotland get involved with football. David is a wonderful example of the success of a project that believes a ball can change the world. The Homeless World Cup helped me change my life by providing me an opportunity to change my own life. It inspired me, it gave me motivation and it encouraged me to be all I can be. 